Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. It's time to have some fun. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Today, we're going to learn all about bugs, one of my favorite things. So come on and join me and let's get going on our bug hunt. Some bugs. Written by Angela Dieterlisi, illustrated by Brendan Wenzel. Some bugs. Some bugs. Some bugs sting. Some bugs bite. Some bugs stink. And some bugs fight. Some bugs flutter. Some bugs crawl. Some bugs curl up in a ball. That's a roly-poly. He's afraid of that raccoon. There's a woolly bear. Some bugs hop, like that leaf hopper, grasshopper. Some bugs glide. Some bugs swim like those diving beetles. And some bugs hide. How many bugs can you see on this page that are hiding? There's quite a few. Can you see them? They are camouflaged. They camouflage so that they can hide from predators. Some bugs click. Some bugs sing. Some bugs do a buzzing thing. What kind of bug is that? Bzz, bzz. Some bugs build. Some bugs make. Some bugs hunt. And some bugs take. Those ants, they're taking their picnic. Stinging, biting, stinking, biting, hopping, gliding, swimming, hiding, building, making, hunting, taking. Bugs are oh so fascinating. So kneel down close, look very hard, and find some bugs in your backyard. Doesn't that look like fun? And oh my goodness, look at all the bugs. All their names are on this page. We have a pink aphid, a boll weevil, a green stink bug pu, a water strider, a scorpion. He's not really a bug, but he's in the same family. This big guy, he is called a Hercules beetle. And there's the hummingbird hawk moth. And of course, my favorite, the monarch butterfly. Check this book out from your library and see if you can find some of the bugs on this page. These are some of the things that you'll want when you go out in your backyard looking for bugs. You'll want a bug catcher box. This has a magnifying glass on the top so that you can see the bug a little bit closer when you catch them. Another thing you can use is a hand lens. The hand lens looks at things, oh, magnifies them so you can see them closer as well. And this one, a butterfly net. A butterfly net or a bug net is used for many different things to catch many different kinds of bugs, but you have to be careful because you don't want to get your butterfly net stuck in tree branches 
or in burdock because that will ruin the net faster than you can blink an eye. Bugs can be found anywhere that there are flowers. If you watch and look carefully, you will find bugs busy doing their own things all over the place on flowers. Bugs like flowers because they drink the nectar from the flowers. If you see that bee right there, he's going and looking for the nectar, which is like flower juice at the bottom of the flower. He is so busy, he doesn't even care that I'm here. He collects that nectar and accidentally gets the pollen on his fuzz on his body to bring back to the hive to feed the babies. Sometimes the bugs are so small that you can barely even notice them. These little tiny yellow specks are aphids on this plant. Those are insects that lay their eggs on the plant and then the little babies hatch from the eggs and they eat the plant. Sometimes the insect seems like it might be one kind of insect, like a bee. And sometimes it's a fly. You can see the little pockets on this one. He's got his pouches full of pollen to bring back to the hive. These insects are very good at camouflaging. And so you can only see them when they move. Do you see? I'm following a grasshopper. <laughs> so grasshoppers will often land and camouflage until it's time for them to move again. Grasshoppers like to live near the grass because that's what they eat. So if you look closely, sometimes you might be able to find a grasshopper in the green parts of the plants and tall grassy areas. Insects only like to move when it's a nice warm day. On cold days and rainy days, they don't move as much. They aren't able to because they're cold blooded. That means that their body temperature is the same temperature as the air around them. So when it gets really cold, they just stay still. Obviously, today is a nice warm day with lots of insects moving around. Let's have different stages to their lives. All insects start as eggs. When those eggs hatch, some insects look just like their moms and dads. Some insects look a little bit different. Can you guess what kind of baby insect this one is? It's a ladybug. Would you ever imagine that? So this ladybug will create a pupa, almost like a cocoon and it will turn into a ladybug. Hmm, right now it's just a baby. You can still see it's got six legs and it's got three body parts and it's got antenna, but as a baby, it doesn't have any wings. It won't grow the wings until it, it's an adult ladybug. Here is the pupa of that ladybug that I was just showing you. Oh, and look at that. There's a beetle. Hmm. He just landed right on my hand. He's not gonna hurt me. I'm just gonna watch him for a minute. This pupa is stuck on this milkweed leaf, kind of like with glue or a webbing that holds it there. And it changes inside of the pupa until it becomes an adult ladybug. When that happens, it'll come out with just a few spots. It'll get more spots as it gets bigger. Mostly have 
four wings, except for the very, very fast fly and mosquito. So flies, as you can see, fly very quickly all around all these plants. Can you watch them? Watch closely. You'll see flies moving very fast throughout. Flies only have two wings. Bees and wasps have four wings. Can you see the wasp? He has four wings. So the four wings still makes them fly fast, but flies are much, much faster. Very agile insects. Butterflies, like the monarch, are also very fast insects. There's a monarch butterfly right there, drinking from the joe pie weed. Monarchs have four wings too. Can you see them? One, two, three, four. They're separate wings to help them to fly from flower to flower. You look carefully. Right there, there's a milkweed beetle. Milkweed plants are amazing because they have so many different insects that live on them and rely on them for their homes. The milkweed beetle has four wings as well, but he has a hard shell over his back. So he doesn't fly as much. He spends most of his time crawling around on the milkweed, eating the milkweed. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look carefully, there is a spider web right here. The spider web is almost invisible because the job of a spider is to capture the insects without letting them know the web is there. So whenever you're in a garden, you can be sure to look for spider webs because spiders eat the insects that are all over in the garden. See, there's only two wings on this fly. Can you see them? But you can see all the other body parts. His head, his thorax, his abdomen, six legs, his two wings, and his big compound eyes. Those eyes help him to see all over so that he knows if he should be flying away. Because something might come and eat him. A couple of ways to use our bug boxes. The bug boxes have a cover that comes off. You can see that the cover comes off. And so what you want to do is try to capture a bug inside the box and quickly put the cover on so that you can look at the insect without being afraid of it. And that way you can release it safely as well. To use your bug box, you'll want to bring your bug box right up to a flower. See how I've done that? And then you just close the bug box over the top of the insect and he is stuck inside. Now you can safely look at the bumblebee while he flies around inside and you can see all the details. When you look for him or when you capture him, Look for all the things that make him an insect. Look for the head, the thorax, the abdomen. Look for the six legs. Look for his four wings and his compound eyes and his two antenna. You can also look to see if you can see his mouth parts. An insect, like a bee, has a mouth part called a proboscis for sucking the nectar from the flowers. Insects like bees also have a stinger on the end of their abdomen. That stinger is there, not to sting you, but to lay eggs. But it also helps to protect their hive or protect themselves. 
bumblebees and honeybees, when they sting, unfortunately won't survive. So they don't like to do it, but if they have to, they will. Wasps can sting over and over and over again. When it's time to release your insect, you simply take the cover off of your insect box and your bug will fly away. They won't bother you because they don't want to have anything to do with you. They need to go out and finish their work and get some more nectar from the flowers. When you're using your net, you want to use your net as a sweeper. So you sweep back and forth and back and forth. By doing that, you're capturing whatever insects might be on the plants that you're sweeping. Hopefully, once you do that, you'll be able to see the insects down at the bottom of your net. There's one now. Oh, he flew away. But you can take your bug box then and capture the insects that are down at the bottom. You just simply take your bug box and cover it so the insect is in there. Can you see him? And then I'm gonna take my cover and I'm going to scoop my cover underneath to make sure that the insect is in the box so that I can take a look at him. So now I've scooped the cover underneath and I have the insect inside the box. Oh, there's another insect on my arm. This one I don't want there because he's a mosquito and he will suck my blood and make my skin itch. So if we look carefully, you can see inside the box using the magnifying glass or looking through the plastic and try to figure out what kind of insect it is. You know, it's not important to know exactly what kind of insect it is. It's more fun to figure out, do I have an insect? Or do I have a spider? Do I have an adult insect with wings? Do I have a baby insect? Those are the things that, more, that are more fun to figure out. Sometimes it's fun to try to identify the insect itself as well. You can use different things like an insect field guide book, or you can use the app called Seek that will help you to identify it. Or you can just simply observe your insect for a little bit and then of course, release it back where it came from. Bye bug. Always make sure and turn your net inside out to get all the rest of the insects out of your net before you go back to store it again. These items can be checked out from the Nature Center. We will let you borrow them as long as you take care of them. And you can also check out a book from your local library. You can come out to the Nature Center and borrow our bug boxes and borrow our nets. As long as you're responsible with them, we will let you borrow those. And you can come and see what kind of insects or insects or spiders or whatever kind of bugs you can find in the nets and in the bug boxes. I hope you had a good time today. Come on out and visit us, borrow these things, check out the bugs that are living in our gardens and see what you can find. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye to everyone. Goodbye, goodbye, we sure did have some fun. Thank you for coming today. Please join me again the next time we have our Little Wonders and Conservancy Crusaders.